When it comes to the Alien franchise, people normally tell this film as the turning point of when the franchise started going downhill. After the success of Alien and Aliens, there was actually big calls for a third film, and yet this film disappointed a lot of people. Why? What went wrong with this film? Well, join me, Berryman, as I discuss 10 things wrong with Alien 3. Alien 3 is a 1992 American science fiction horror film directed by David Fincher. Set right after the events of Aliens, Ripley and an alien organism are the only survivors of the colonial marine spaceship Sulaco, following an escape pod's crash on a planet housing a penal colony populated by violent male inmates. When the film was released, it did receive mixed reviews and regarded as inferior to the previous installments, so much so that Fincher has disowned the film. However, in 2000 a revised version of the film, known as the Assembly Cut, was released without Fincher's involvement but received warmer reception. But what have I found wrong with this film? Well, let's find out. Number 10. The Bitch is Back Okay, I don't normally like swearing in these videos, but unfortunately I have to on this segment. So everyone knows and everyone loves the line from the Aliens where she shouts, Get away from her, you bitch. Best line in that film. Brilliant. So in the trailer for this film, to capture that iconic moment, they actually use the tagline, the bitch is back. That is a lie. The bitch was the alien queen. Now, depending on which version of this film you watch, there's no alien queen or there is a cameo from an alien queen. There's more on that a bit later. But yeah, the bitch didn't actually appear in this film. Unless you want to be calling Ripley the bitch, which is wrong because, let's face it, she's a badass. Number 9. Script Now, I was going to actually list off the name of all the people involved in the script for this film, but this video will be about an hour long on one section, so I'm not going to. But yeah, this film had so many script issues. The first draft script came out right after Aliens came out, and it was being rewritten and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten and so on and so on. It was still being rewritten as they were filming this film. It got so bad is the actors go and film a scene, they think it's done, then to be told, no, sorry, we're not using that scene anymore, we've rewritten it. There was, <laughs> they were rewriting the script after they finished filming the scene that was already written. Literally, these actors had to film this film twice. Which is why there is an assembly cut of this film, because there is that much footage of this film, you could make two completely different films. Number eight, director. Right, before anyone shoots me, I am not saying anything bad about David Fincher. In fact, he's done an absolute brilliant job. He's got the best out of his cast. He's gone on to, to make a brilliant career for himself. Go and check out Seven. What's in the box? Brilliant film. And a lot of people do, some people in certain circles, blame David Fincher for the failure of this film. But it's not. David Fincher had the support of the entire cast and the entire crew. There were people that were standing in his corner. They thought what he wanted to do was brilliant. Hell, he taught Sigourney Weaver quite easily to shaving her head. So why is he getting the blunt for it? Well, it was the studio. The studio would not let David Fincher do what he wants to do with this film. Now, when you look at the setup and the camera shots, he's done an absolute brilliant job with what he's allowed to. Can you imagine what this film would have been like if he was allowed to do what he's good at? And let's face it, he is good. Even James Cameron actually turned around and said he doesn't blame David Fincher for the failure of this film because he likes what David Fincher's done with it and he's called this a beautiful disaster. That is a good compliment. But yeah, all the director issues, there wasn't any. It was all the studio and unfortunately David Fincher, who has disowned this film, has taken the bronze of it, which is very unfair and very wrong. Number seven, Survivors. At the end of Aliens, there were four people who survived, sort of. You had Ripley, perfectly fine. Newt, perfectly fine. Corporal Hicks, okay, he had some injuries, but overall he was fine. And Bishop, okay, he was ripped in half, but he's an android, so meh, he's okay. So at the beginning of this film, they kill them all off. 
Now, Carrie Hain was okay about being killed off because she didn't actually want to return, so that's fine. Michael Bain was absolutely pissed that he was killed off, so much so he refused to let this film use his likeness. Hence why you don't actually see his body because he refused. Now you do see a picture of him, a very bad digital photo of him. He actually let them use it because David Fincher asked him personally. Also, Michael Bain actually got paid more for that one photo than he did for Aliens. So he actually came on top. But yeah, he was mad. He was really not happy. Lance Hendrickson, same again. He wasn't happy that he was killed off. Now, yes, he did come back as a cameo, but that was same again. David Finch had arranged that. He went up and asked him personally. And Lance Hendrickson actually said he had a good time filming that cameo. But same again, you managed to hack off the actors I would have liked to see a bit more of these characters. Ripley's not on her own in her fight against the company and trying to get these aliens. But you, yeah, it's you could have done so much more. Instead, you sort of just rehashed, tried to rehash the first film, and you failed. Number six, Infected Ripley. So majority of this film, Ripley finds out she has an alien inside her. It's a queen alien. How did she get infected? Now, before anyone says, well, it shows you getting infected in the beginning of the film. No, it doesn't. In the storyboard, the picture of the face hugger on a face was actually newt. The actual units are sealed. Ripley's unit didn't get broken until she was trying to escape and they were already infected. The alien infected newt. Wait, Berryman. They did an autopsy, she was fine, yes. Now, this was actually storyboarded, and this was actually in the comics, but after the escape pods come out, the facehuggers come off Newt, knowing that Newt's about to die, the embryo came out of her mouth, swam and went back into Ripley. That is how Ripley actually got infected. Now they didn't film it because they couldn't actually work out a way to do it. But it would have made a little bit more sense instead of having images of Newt and Ripley. So yeah, I would have liked to have known how or seen, because let's face it, having a facehugger on Ripley would have been an iconic scene, but you didn't show it and it's just wrong. Number five, assembly cut. Now I'm putting the assembly cut on here because there's not much wrong with the assembly cut. I've like, granted some of the issues from, uh, from both versions, but the assembly cut is a superior version. So why am I putting it on the list? Because unlike the director's cuts for the first two films where it's just added scenes, the assembly cut is actually a completely different story. A superior story, if in fact. Let me explain. There were added scenes about uh, Ripley running through the ship where she bumps into Dallas. There was the firefighting aliens where they've got automatic machine guns beating back the aliens. Great, you're adding to those films. This one is completely different. Let's face it, in the theatrical cut, it was a dog. In the assembly cut, it was an ox who gave birth to the alien. Two different stories, same alien, out uh, same alien outcome. The massive fire, and this is what I love, the massive fire, the good guys, the prisoners, they won. They beat the alien. Let's face it, that's the first time that's actually happened in this franchise. The director's cut hadn't come out at this point. What a brilliant twist. And then a completely, utterly psycho prisoner lets the alien out. I love that. That is brilliant storytelling. Yet yeah, you cut that for this other version where it's like, no, we can't beat the alien. No, I like the fact that these prisoners beat the alien and it just makes it more interesting. The assembly cut is so much better in so many ways. We should not have had two completely, utterly different versions of this film. And that's why it's on this list because two versions of this film is wrong. Just like Justice League. I may do that one day. Number four, English prisoners. Why does Hollywood hate us English? Seriously, the, all the prisoners, well, near enough, all the prisoners bar the main prisoner, they're all English. 
Go check out the cast list in the com in the description. They're all who's who's of English. There was people who were well known in the 90s, people whose careers hadn't started yet. It, this is a who's who's. When you watch this film and look at these prisoners, I thought myself, I know him from this, I know him from this, I know him from this. He's brilliant, but why are they all English? I mean, is this a space version of Botany Bay? It's a bit racist, isn't it? I mean, I know the film was filmed in England, but you could have shipped some more American extras over, but I do take offense that this film, all the prisoners are English. I am offended. Number three, CGI. I do feel a little bit bad about putting this list, but even for the time, the CGI was bad. Which is quite bizarre because the special effects are actually really good. When you see the alien normally, he looks pretty good. The model bishop that actually talks is a model. That's brilliant. You got him mouthing the words perfectly. I always used to think it was Lance Henriksen with tons of makeup on. It wasn't. It was a robot that looked and sounded like him. 10 out of 10. Then the CGI of that alien running around. That's just like, it was laughable then. Now we've had so many more improvements, it's even laughable. It's awful, really awful. Number two, ending. Now, do you know what I said earlier? The assembly cut was a, definitely a better version of this film. I maintain that, except for the ending. The theatrical version actually has a better ending. Now, it's only a small thing. So, in the theatrical version, Ripley chucks herself into the furnace, the Queen alien appears, and Ripley in her last breath is holding the uh, alien queen as they get burnt alive. I love that. So what happens in the assembly car? She jumps off and falls. On this occasion, <laughs> the theatrical version is a better ending. And <laughs> what, what, why ruin that ending? That's the only decent thing about the theatrical version. Put that back. Then you have a complete version of this film. Number one, Morse. So this film does have a survivor. It's a prisoner called Morse. Why? You've just killed off the good guy, 85. He, he, he was actually a company man. You killed him. So you've lost everything. Morse can actually bring the company down a bit here. Who's gonna know? Just pop a bullet in him. No survivors, end of. The company still wins. That would have made a good ending. But no, you got this prisoner who would be a blabbermouth surviving. Why did you let him live? I mean, he had one of the best lines in this film, but I didn't like the fact that he survived. Which is, eh, well, well, never mind. Final thoughts. Ultimately, I don't mind this film. I never have minded this film. I kind of liked it when it came out. It was a good, enjoyable film. It looks good by the appalling CGI. David Finch has done a good job with what he was allowed to do. He has got the best out of these people. And let's face it, Sigourney Weaver looks hot, bold. Great. And the one thing I've always loved, and this is gonna be controversial here, this actually has the best soundtrack of the trilogy. I really love the music in this. It really enhances it and emphasizes each and every scene the music's in. I love it. But yes, now as I'm older, I understand. And then seeing the assembly cut, what a film. It changes my perception of the theatrical cut a little bit. I do prefer the assembly cut. It's a more complete, rounded and consistent film compared to the theatrical version. Do I wish that the survivors came in? Yes. Do I wish some of these other scripts could have been better stories? Yes. But at the end of the day, this is what we got. It's an entertaining, fun Avenger. Let's face it, out of the three trilogy, this is the most fun you're gonna get in an alien film. So what am I going to rank it? Well, this week I'm actually gonna give two rankings. The theatrical version, I'm actually gonna give a six out of 10 berries. The assembly cut, I'm actually gonna give eight out of 10 berries. Two different ratings for the same film. Controversial. But that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. On to next week. 
Well, next week, we're going to do a film about a group of people that are dying to save the world. That's not as cryptic if you know what I'm on about. What if you don't know what I'm on about? Come back next Sunday and find out. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.